patients with fish hooks embedded anywhere in the body, oftentimes in the back of the neck or in the hands, come to the emergency department uh, to get them removed. The reason they can't just be pulled out themselves is because they have barbs on them. Here you have two barbs. They're relatively small, but they're facing backward. So once it goes in the skin, trying to pull it back out, the barb gets caught. And uh, you can't tell the size of the barb just by looking at the hook. Uh, but this is about the standard size for one of them. Now when the, when the hook is past the curve, this curve here, you know that it's in the skin uh, and the barbs are in, in the soft tissue. Okay, Jim, so can you show us technique number one? Yes, here's technique number one, probably one of the more common presentations. In this particular example, the fish hook is near the end of, a, of the finger, for example, but the end is not out all the way. So it's still trying to pull it back out, pushing it that way, it won't work. Now, normally you're wearing gloves and a mask for this, but since this is a demonstration, I won't be wearing it. But you can see you can't pull this out. So what you do with this one is you push it all the way through, then you cut the end off with a um, pair of pliers or, or a metal cutter, and then you just pull it back out all the way. This is a soft piece of meat, so it should come out. Okay, so that one, push it all the way through, cut off the ends, pull it back out. And now you have just a puncture wound. Okay, so what about technique number two? Can you show us that? Yes, here's technique number two. Probably the more common way to present with a fish hook is it's in the middle of the tissue somewhere. So if you see the, it's down there past the barb and it won't come back out. Now. One thing you could do if it's really superficial is you can make a, a laceration with a scalpel and then just lift it out. But another way to get it back out is to put a piece of string or a suture around the hook and I'm going to press down on the hook and pull back on the string. And then what that does is it moves the barb back into the track that it went in and comes right back out. Now you have another puncture wound. Okay, finally, can you show us technique number three? Yes, this is technique number three. The final way is just to figure out in your head what you're going to do based on the certain circumstance. And that includes figuring out where the where it is. Sometimes if you just pull it all the way around up that way and cut it off, it'll work. Or if it's in much deeper, you can make a laceration with a scalpel this way and that way, and then just sort of wiggle it around and it'll come out uh, as you cut down on it. And then you have a little laceration, which you can usually leave open depending on the cosmesis of it or you can put one stitch in it. Okay, so now that you've taken the fish hook out, what else do I need to keep in mind? It depends on what's on the fish hook. If there's a worm on it, for example, you want to make sure you irrigate the tract very well, but very difficult to irrigate this small puncture wound. And I would advise not trying to stick a needle in there and blowing up a lot of ceiling because that won't get anything out. So um, you just want to irrigate the entrance and the exit and it's usually fine. Usually antibiotics are not required. If it's been in there for a day or it's really dirty or maybe there's an organic piece in there, a couple of days worth of, uh, of a cephalosporin would probably be all right. But the vast majority of the time, these are just a, a clean puncture wound, don't need antibiotics. And if, there's a, if you make a little laceration to get the hook out, don't close it you can, unless it's really big. You can just leave it open and it'll heal by itself. All good words of wisdom. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.